Did you watch a fourth movie this week? Saw one called House from 1977. Or Hausu. Hausu. Japanese. So 1977. So it wasn't, you know, high tech. It wasn't, yeah. It's a lot more high tech than I would have guessed. Directed by, by Nobuhiko Obayashi. Written by Chiho Katsura. Stars Kimiko Ikigami, Miki Jinbo, and Kumiko Oba. Easy One for hour, you to say. 27 minutes. I think I got those right. I, you know. Yeah. Now, there's mm. seven girls in this movie, mm-hmm. and they have the weirdest names, which I'll get to in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kind of a weird movie. No, this is a weird movie. Very weird. Last yeah. week, we talked about 1981's Possession movie, and it was weird, and we hated it. Mm-hmm. This one was weird. And I'm not even going to say what I think yet, because I'm going to wait and see what he thinks. We haven't talked about this one yet. We haven't talked about it yet. (laughs) Gorgeous and Fantasy, two of the friends. Gorgeous and Fantasy are friends in high school. Gorgeous's father works for the film industry, and he's just back from Italy. He brought his new wife as going to be Gorgeous's mother, which is news to her. Surprise! (laughs) I hear you hear. Who's this? Oh, it's your mother. She doesn't react well to it. No. No. The next morning, Gorgeous meets up with her six friends. Mac, Prof, Sweet, Kung Fu, Fantasy, and Melody. And believe it or not, all of these characters, that's their attribute, just happens to be their name. Mm -hmm. Kung Fu is a fighter. Prof is is a professor. She's really brainy. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous invites them all to her aunt's house in her dead mother's hometown. Her uncle died in the war, and her aunt never remarried. They take the bus and run into a fat man in a shop that points the way to the ant's house. The Harbinger. <laughs> Every movie. <laughs> Every. <laughs> we haven't had visitors in a long time. The lady will be very displeased, he tells his watermelon. Yeah, he talks to his watermelons. Yeah. We meet up with the ant, and almost immediately one of the girl's cameras breaks. The ant used to teach piano, but she hasn't in a long time. She's in a wheelchair now. Soon... Fantasy finds Mac's head floating in the well. It smiles and bites her in the butt. Yeah, like literally. Yeah. When the other girls go to look, it's just Mac's watermelon floating there. Later, Kung Fu has to fight off some attacking firewood. Yes, firewood. You heard that right. The ant is eating bits bits of Mac's corpse and doing various witchy things around the house. It's very clear to us that she's a witch. Mm Mm-hmm. Gorgeous spends too much time watching herself in the mirror and sets herself on fire and burns up. Spontaneous combustion. Melody is playing music on the piano while the skeleton in the corner keeps time. Then the piano bites her finger. Just one chomp. At first. Sweet is eaten by pillows and mattresses in the supply room. And I'll... Well, okay, we'll talk. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The ghost of Gorgeous then goes outside. Suddenly, all the doors and windows shut and lock, and everyone is trapped inside with no power. Kung Fu tries to kick the door down. Doesn't work. It has no luck. Yeah. Yeah. They find Mac's hand and start to get concerned. The piano then bites off all of Melody's fingers, then it swallows her whole. That was a great scene. You're silent, okay. Mm. (laughs) Gorgeous returns, explaining that the ant has been dead for years, but her body remains, eating all the unmarried girls who come to visit. Finally, it's Kung Fu versus Gorgeous's ghost in one of the most unique battle scenes ever. Hmm. What'd you think? I kind of hated it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. There were some chuckles. I mean, like the, the severed fingers that kept playing the piano after after it ate her. The fingers but... themselves that got bit off, but then they're just playing the piano by themselves. Yeah. Well, it was it was like you know, kind of filmed in hyper reality, like a kids show, or you know, um, it this, wasn't scary. It was, I mean, it wasn't any more scary than an episode of Scooby Doo. It might be it scary was, if you were six. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, it's like a kids show. It's not it's a like kids show. It's like, though. but this it's was like serious. A, it's it's a kids show for children you hate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, Timmy, watch this. <laughs> it probably would freak out children. Kids show for children you hate. But yes. as an adult, I just kind of thought it was mostly just lame. I didn't find it very entertaining. It was weird. And yeah, yeah, it's weird. Oh, look, something else weird happened. Want to watch I, this again or watch Possession again? <laughs> 
I think I'd rather watch Possession again. <laughs> this could only be called a live-action anime. The visual style is something like a cross between an anime and H.R. Puffin stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like you said, children's or show. Or Pee-wee's Playhouse or, you know. The you visuals know. are way out there and completely unique. It's done in a washed-out soap opera style with fake clouds and over-the-top artificial sets, strange musical bits for no particular reason, cartoon segments, and oddly inappropriate bits of humor. Now, one thing I, I did like that was a clever bit, I thought, um, they're, they're traveling on the bus going to the, the, the mountain it's town. it's bright, cloudy sky. And, this is a matte painting. And it's a matte painting, clearly, that they're, you know, that you're seeing outside the bus windows. And then they pull up and get out of the bus and it's clearly they're standing in front of a matte painting and you see the wide frame and you can see the small matte painting that's in front of the bus where the girls are standing. <laughs> it looks like a mistake, they, but it's not. It's no, a it's a deliberate thing. yeah, style thing that they use this matte painting on purpose and then they pull back and you see the matte painting within the matte painting and yeah, it was kind of clever. Neat. Kind of kind of a neat way to do it, yeah. All of the girls are named after their primary attribute, and they're mostly all stereotypes based on that type. There are two very simple little short music segments that are repeated over and over throughout the film. Too much. And they really start to grate after the first hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just... Yeah, that one tune especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. recurring. Yeah. It's kind of like a little anime tune. It's kind of cute. It's kind of light the first time you hear it, but then it gets repeated. By the 30th repeated, time you hear it, repeated. it's a little old. Yeah. Overall, it's silly, the acting is truly atrocious, and the story is not much better. But I still recommend seeing this, just so you can see this. The visuals alone make up for the problems with everything else. I give it a serious six. What's your number? I'm thinking a, a, a point five. <laughs> <laughs> a one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Didn't really care for it. Okay. We watched it, so you don't have to. <laughs> but we watched it, so you do have to. Well, it's kind of a paradox I'm saying, there. watch it. He's saying stay away. <laughs> yeah. At least we both agree on possession. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's our show. That is our show. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Stop in during the week at horrorguys.com for news and horror updates, to comment on this podcast, or to contact us. If there's a horror movie out there that you have seen recently that we need to see in Tell us about it. Yeah, let we, us know. We, we've got certain yeah. things that we have to do each week, like the Universal Films, but we've got room for openings if you've got a good suggestion. We'll and listen. if you're a filmmaker, even you know a short or a full length, you know, let us know. Yeah. Send us a screener copy if you can. Or point and, us to your YouTube, whichever. Yeah, yeah, or if it's available online. As, you know, a full movie or whatever. Yeah, we'll review. We're yeah. up We're up for independent independent things, too. So, yeah. Yeah. We might slam you. Oh, we'll probably be extra generous. Oh, we'll be gentle. Yeah, we're gentle with indies. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Well, next yeah. week, we'll be watching Universal Studios' monster flick, The Invisible Man Returns from 1940. Did that get Claude Rains or somebody else? You know, I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay, I don't know. we'll find out. Yeah, we the will. somewhat contemporary classic, Quatermass 2 from 1957. We already saw it. The only thing better than Quatermass is more Quatermass. More Quatermass. The very new movie, 1822, from 2017. No, 1922. Yeah, not if you type it wrong. Okay, 1922. 1922. Stephen King. Yes. Time travel. Is it time travel? I don't think so. Okay. Not that one. I no. know what 1963 is right. about. Yes. No, this actually takes place in 1922 and just a horror movie. Have not Set seen it. Set in that yet. year, I believe. Okay. Haven't seen it. Yeah. And our international feature, Hot Tension from 2003. Haven't seen that either. Hot? 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 I, I'm French. not sure how to pronounce that. Okay. And that was going to be my next question. What nationality it is, is French, this? Yes. Okay. Give them a watch this week, and we'll talk about those next week, and you can mm -hmm. compare what you think to what we think. Yeah. Check out our Twitter feed at Ad Horror Bulletin and our group Horror Guys podcast on Facebook. Check out our Patreon page if you want to give us a couple bucks. We're working on some very special episodes that are going to go out to the Patreon people soon. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you about more of those in a week or two. Yeah. And I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. I'm not Kevin. I'm not Brian. But we are the Horror Guys. Yeah. And we'll see you yeah. next week. See ya.